Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for being here today. Today's video is going to be my November wrap up where I'm gonna talk about all the books that I read in November and give you my ratings. But first, I do have a popsicle stick joke. We have, <laughs> what do you call two elephants talking? <laughs> a heavy discussion, right? <laughs> right, okay, exactly, I know. <laughs> Who saw that coming? I didn't actually, that's why I laughed when I first read it. Anyway, so yes, today's video is going to be my November wrap up. I have quite the stack of books to discuss and I'm nervous if I can be honest with you guys. <laughs> I am genuinely so nervous because there are some heavy hitters on this list. We have The Secret History, we have This Time Next Year, uh, we have The Flat Share, and we also have Ready Player Two. Mother of God, I finished that a couple hours ago and I have an opinion on it and I'm nervous to share it with you. So we can disagree, let me just say that. If you disagree with something I've said in this video, that's fine, but let's be kind about it. Let's be, let's be sweet, okay? There's no need to be rude if we disagree with one another, but I have some very strong opinions on some of the Ready Player Two books that I read this month and I'm ready to share them with you. But first I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, who is Libby. Oh my God, can you guys believe it? Genuinely, I have talked about Libby so many times over 2020. It is an app that I use every single day and I'm not exaggerating. So if you don't know what Libby is, well, let me enlighten you. It is a library based app that helps you find audiobooks and eBooks for free, keywords there, for free, um, through your library cards. So luckily you can stack more than just one library card on top of your Libby app. I personally have like four or five at this point. Um, I know that times are really hard right now, especially with actually going to libraries in person. So personally for me, for all the library cards that I have, except for one of them, I've been able to get library cards online, you just fill out an application online, you like put in your address and your name, and then they issue you, issue you a virtual library card right away. And then you can type that into Libby and get access to a bunch of eBooks and audiobooks. I genuinely love Libby so much and I just wanna thank them so much for sponsoring this video. It is genuinely so exciting to me. So download Libby now, get a library card online and then download Libby and have your world changed. And um, yeah, thanks so much for sponsoring this video. So let's just start off with on a high note, which is The Secret History. I read this for my book club, The Late Night Book Club. This was our October book and our live show wasn't until November 1st, I think. So I didn't actually finish it until after I had recorded my wrap up. So I didn't give my full thoughts or rating on this book, but I'm here to give it now. Uh, I gave this book a two out of five stars. I really didn't enjoy it. The way that I felt reading this book, let, let, put on your thinking caps with me, let me take you somewhere. Picture this, you are in a class where there's a group of people who are clearly smarter than you and they know they're smarter than you and they also want you to know that they know that you know they're smarter than you, you know? Um, and I felt that way many times in my life, especially in higher education. I constantly feel like I'm not good enough to be in a classroom or to be writing next to my peers. Like I just feel like, a lot of the times I feel like I'm too stupid for my degree. And this book was a manifestation of that. I felt dumb the entire time. I felt alienated by the characters a lot of the time. So if this is one of your favorite books, I actually understand because I understand the aesthetics of it. And I also understand that there is like a murdered student that you're trying to figure out who did the murder and why they were murdered. Like it's very cool in that regard. Um, but the way it was written and the characters themselves, none of them were really great. I think there was one character that I was like, you're kind of cool. Um, and then all the other ones I was like, wow, you're all super flawed in a very dark way and I'm not having fun. So two out of five for me, didn't love it. All right, the next book that I read was called The Roommate and I gave this book a two out of five stars. Again, starting the month off strong. Um, wow, this book, it's a cute little romance between uh, basically there's this girl that moves to LA and she is pining after like her 
high school sweetheart person, although I don't know if it was ever reciprocated in terms of romance, but basically she moves to LA to pine after this guy, and then she ends up meeting her new roommate, hence the name of the book, and uh, the new roommate ends up being a porn star. And so the two of them are trying to like, cohabitate together and live in the same place while like obviously being attracted to each other, but she doesn't think that she can be with a porn star. And he thinks that he's not good enough to be with her because he's been alienated by a lot of people in his life. And so uh, he's coming into it with low self-esteem and she's coming into it with like, this is a scandal and I can't have scandal in my life. And then, you know, a storyline unfolds. I'll be honest, I think it was a pretty cool concept, like that kind of exploration of the porn industry and like love and jealousy and insecurities through your career. I thought that was all very interesting. Um, but by the end of it, I was like, yeah, I'm not attached to either of the characters and you kind of have to be for a romance to work well for you, right? Right. So. Not my favorite, but also a cute way to pass the time. And I did use Libby to find that audiobook. So, hey. <laughs> All right, <laughs> now, you know what? I'm just gonna go through the three books that I reread this month, even though they're not in order. But the first book that I reread this month was for class and that was The Maltese Falcon. This is the third time that I've read this book and I don't really need to say a lot else about it, except that it is one of my favorite books now. Um, I just think it's so fun. And yes, Sam Spade is a misogynist. And yes, there's some problems in the book, but at the time that it came out in the 1930s, it was a really cool hard boiled detective story. And it's really fun to read. And Bridget O'Shaughnessy, who is our main lady, is so fun to read. And our main detective, Sam Spade, is an exceptional like character um, dissection. He's so fun to read and he has his problems for sure. <laughs> Don't we all? Um, but I just have so much fun reading it. So Maltese Falcon, forever and always, I'm already planning a falcon tattoo because of this book. So <laughs> who knows when it'll happen, but there it is. The next book that I reread this month was A is for Alibi. Again, this was for one of my classes. I am a TA for a detective fiction class. And so this was one of the books that we had to read. Um, I gave this a five out of five the first time I read it. I gave this a three out of five the second time I read it, only because I think when I first read this book, I was so entranced by like the story that I didn't really focus on the bad sides of it. I was just like, whoa, I've never really read something like this. And then I've read this now and I'm like, oh, okay, it was fun. But I mean, it's not a favorite. A five out of five for me means it's like an absolute favorite and that's not what this book is. So I've dropped it back down to a three, but it's also super, super fun. It's really, really, really fast paced. If you wanna read a female detective um, and the whole thing kind of takes place in Southern California and Las Vegas, super fast paced, um, really twisty, some things you think you can figure out and then other things just like smack you across their face. It's like so jarring at points. And yeah, so I really, really liked it. And I liked it the first time. And I also liked it the second time, but I just didn't love it as much the second time. But still a strong, still a strong detective novel. Nothing wrong with it. Just not an all time favorite, which is what a five out of five should be. Okay, <laughs> speaking of five out of fives. Um, <laughs> the next book that I reread this month was The Hating Game. I don't really need to say much about this. I had started to reread this because I was, I think I was not having a great time. Like mentally, I think I was feeling very claustrophobic um, because of COVID and I just like needed to kind of like get out of my own skin for a second. Like I just needed to shake it off and I chose The Hating Game and wow. <laughs> Is it possible to give a book a six out of five? Because that's where I'm headed with this one. Um, I had so much fun rereading this and it was just a blast. So five out of five, I know this book isn't for everyone, but it is for me. <laughs> so <laughs> I love it so much. I love it. What do you want me to say? I love it. Okay. The lighting's changing a lot. I'm so sorry, but that's, that's the way it goes. 
All right, the next book that I read this month was The Flat Share, which was really fun. It's this cute romance that also deals with some really heavy topics. Um, and it was a book that was recommended to me a lot because after I had finished rereading The Hating Game on Instagram, I was like, hey, I feel a deep pit of despair now that I've finished The Hating Game again. Uh, can you give me some more fun romances to read? And The Flat Share was one that came up so much in that little question box I put on Instagram. <laughs> question box. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, uh, so I read it and it was really sweet, really endearing. Um, it has a lot of descriptions around an abusive relationship. One of the main characters has just gotten out of an abusive relationship and they are trying to learn how to love and be loved post abuse. And it was really hard to read, not gonna lie. But basically it's all about this girl and guy who are flat sharing. <laughs> You can believe it, hence the name. Uh, she works during the day and so she only stays there at night and then he works at night cause he's like a nurse and so he works at night and so then he sleeps during the day. So they never actually like cross paths for like the first six months they're in the flat together, um, which is really fun. They get to know each other through note writing and um, just getting to know each other via notes. What am I saying? I just said the same thing twice. Now, with all that being said, I gave the book a three out of five, which I think is confusing because I gave, I mean, it's a good review, right? Like I'm saying I really enjoyed it. And I think the author did a really great job. It just didn't emotionally connect with me in the way a five out of five would, but I still really liked it. So I was rooting for the characters. I was happy for the characters. It was really sweet. But by the end, I didn't feel like this intense, like romantic pull to the characters. I wasn't like, oh my God, my heart. It was just like, that was sweet. Glad I read it. So that's what a three out of five for me is usually. Um, if it's a two or a one out of five, that usually means I really didn't like it. Um, but if it's a three or up, it means it was great, but maybe it wasn't my favorite and that's okay. But that's, that's that. <laughs> Okay, the next book that I read this month was This Time Next Year. I did a reading vlog around this book, and so I've kind of already discussed my opinions on it. I gave it a two out of five. Um, it started off as a like strong four out of five. Like I'd say the first third, I was in it to win it. You know what I mean? I was in it. I loved it. I thought it was wonderful. I thought it was so sweet. Um, and then in the final two thirds, it felt like it went on really slow and I just had lost my interest. And it's one of those books that kind of jumps you present to past a lot. And although I really liked that in the first third, by the second two thirds, whenever we would jump to the past, I remember thinking like, God damn it. <laughs> like that's all right. I guess I have to deal with this until we go back to the present. So I think what the author was doing was really fun and was really interesting. But by the end, I was like, can we just finish this? <laughs> right? I was like, I'm ready for this to be done. Um, I'll also say this, and maybe it's not important to you, but there was little to no steam in this book, which was disappointing for me, okay? Okay, I've turned on the lights behind me and you can't tell. <laughs> the next book that I read this month was My Favorite Half Night Stand and I really liked it. It was really sweet. Um, I thought it was really fun and it's basically surrounding, um, there's this main girl, she's a professor and she has like four guy best friends and she starts to fall for one of the guy best friends. So she's interested in her best friend. She doesn't think he's interested in her. Um, and then eventually the five of them, like the four guy best friends, and then she all decide that they're gonna try finding dates to an event through dating apps. And so all of them sign up for the same dating app and she matches with him without him realizing it. Um, and so you kind of see how this snowballs and, um, I'm not gonna spoil anything but drama ensues, okay? So yeah, I mean, it was really sweet. It was a really cute romance. I gave it a three out of five because as cute as I thought it was, I am 100% going to forget that I read it. <laughs> um, and I'm, that's, I'm not trying to be shady. I just, it was one of those books that I just like read on a Saturday or like on a weekend. And I was like, oh, this fun little thing. And I listened to it on Libby and I was like, cute. 
And I know I'm not gonna really remember it in a couple years or even in a couple months. So that's why I got the three out of five for me. <laughs> The next book that I read this month was Shipped, which is an arc. And I actually reached out to the author herself and I was like, hey, I am obsessed with the plot of this book and I desperately would love to read it as soon as I can. Um, and so I was sent an arc, which was super, super exciting. So thank you, Angie Hawkman, for sending me a copy of your book. Seriously, so exciting. Um, and basically, I can't say a lot about this book because it is an arc, so legally, I don't think I'm allowed to do that. Um, but the synopsis on the back basically says, I don't know why I'm showing it to you. I'm just gonna hold it like this. Um, basically it is a perfect blend of the hating game and the unhoneymooners. So you have two coworkers going for the same promotion, but the book takes place on a cruise. Um, and so that kind of mixes those two books together and it's really fun and it's really sweet. I give this a three out of five, uh, mainly because it's not a absolute favorite of mine. Like again, as I've said about the three out of five, it's not because I had anything I really hated or anything about this book. It was just a book that I was like, that was really sweet. Glad I read it but not an absolute favorite of mine. It's very atmospheric too. So if you can read this over a summer, oh my God, please do it. <laughs> like, especially, or actually you could read it as soon as it comes out in January because it really did take me out of my COVID-19 brain where like, I just feel like I'm trapped in my house. This really felt like I was on a cruise and I was swimming in the ocean and I was looking at fish. Like it was really fun. Um, and so if you want a really great escape book, this is absolutely wonderful. I had a lot of fun with it, um, but yeah. And last but not least, my friends, <laughs> I don't want to talk about this one. It's like you want to talk about it, but you're also nervous to talk about it. And that is Ready Player Two. Hmm. What to say? What to say? Oh, God. Um, we all know how I feel about Ready Player One. I read it earlier this year and I gave it a five out of five. Ready Player One is excellent, in my opinion. Um, it's not like the best, the best written novel I've ever read. It's not like this beautifully rich, wonderful writing, but Ready Player One is so fun. And that's what I needed at the start of the pandemic. I really needed something to take me out of the world and put me literally in the oasis. Um, and so Ready Player One is quite the gem. Ready Player Two is not the same. Um, Ready Player Two is, I do not feel the same way for Ready Player Two as I did for Ready Player One. <laughs> so what do you say? Um, it was just really disappointing to me. Um, the, the word that I use for this book is cramped. Uh, it feels like the author knew what worked for Ready Player One and tried to shove all of that into Ready Player Two. Um, but make it even longer. Something that I was thinking about, and I did do a reading vlog around this, which will probably come out in a week or so um, because I have to edit that bitch and it's gonna be a hefty one. Um, but um, one of the things that I talk about in that vlog is that in the first Ready Player One, there's a lot of 80s references, which is fine. I did not, I was not born in the 80s. I did not grow up in the 80s. I don't really know the 80s that well. But Ready Player One is so expertly done that I didn't really feel like I was out of the loop, right? I was like, yeah, I've never played that video game before, but the author did such a good job at describing it that I feel like I'm there, right? I feel like I get it. Um, whereas with Ready Player Two, I felt alienated for a lot of the chapters of this book. Yeah, I mean, it. It didn't, this book already didn't really need to exist. And I knew that going into reading it because I feel like Ready Player One wraps up so well. It really wraps up so beautifully. Um, and so I knew Ready Player Two did not need to exist, but <laughs> um, I was excited to see what happened. And then I read it. I could do a whole video rant reviewing this book because there were a few things that I really liked, but overall I was sorely disappointed. And the ending. I mean, again, no spoilers, but that ending, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Like that was so, 
so disappointing to me. It felt like, hey, in like chapter four, we're gonna bring up this huge issue. And then at the end, we're basically gonna say, yeah, well, oops, oh well, doesn't matter. We're not gonna fix it. And that was really upsetting to me. So didn't like it. I could do a whole spoilery rant review on this book because of how betrayed I feel. <laughs> um, but yeah, I gave this a two out of five, mainly because I did have fun. It was a fun read. It felt like Ready Player One in the fact that I was like, or in the sense that I was like, ooh, what's gonna happen? Is everything gonna be okay? Um, but I <laughs> didn't like it. So that's Ready Player Two for you, my friends. And that is the November wrap up. So yeah, <laughs> that's the end of this video, my friends. I hope you had fun. Let me know what you, like what was your best book of November and then what was your worst book of November? Um, I'd say best book for me, The Hating Game. Worst book for me, Ready Player Two. So uh, yeah, not how I thought this would go, but here it is. Anyway, let me know what you guys are reading in December and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.